welcome. You're listening to the Empath Intuitive Heart Driven Podcast with Megan Jean. Here we explore the realm of energy, intuition, and feelings. We learn how to navigate our path, feel empowered to be who we are, expand our intuition, and connect peacefully to our purpose. If you've ever been called sensitive, if you've ever struggled with the fact that you don't do normal, or you're craving the support to tap into your soul and step out into the world as your true self, then this healing and expansive podcast is for you. As an empath, do we embrace our superpowers? Do we embrace who we are? Or do we look at some of our traits as being weaknesses? Now, I would say that every single one of us, yes, of course, we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. But everything is perception, right? What works for one person doesn't work for the other. And in today's episode, I'm exploring a little bit about how we feel as being empaths. What does that mean for our overall identity? And I guess the the aim is to really, really, peeps, embrace who you are. Today's episode, I I cover things around perhaps the shame that is felt, you know, not being able to go at things 100 Ks an hour, you know, like other people, or as I mentioned, you know, taking the bull by the horns. Maybe you do need to feel a little bit more softened. Maybe you do need to be a little bit more reserved or protected. I bring up those topics for discussion, like do you feel like... Maybe sometimes you use your identity as an excuse. You know, it can work the other way. Do you allow your identity to hold you back? I mentioned a little bit about human design with a full disclaimer that I absolutely know nothing about it. (laughs) And also we delve into the ways that empaths and other people, of course, can be a little bit more prone to people-pleasing. Now, I sort of go through a reason why, and it might be something that you've never considered before. But always when we become aware of things, that always opens the door to healing and expansion. So stay tuned for today's episode, talking all about identity as an empath. Hello, hello again, Megan Jean here. Another beautiful episode in season two of the Empath Intuitive Heart Driven Podcast. So good to be back. Hopefully you caught the last episode, last week's episode, which was all around living the heart-driven life. But this week, it's just one of those things. I wanted to talk about identity. And I always find if, if a topic comes into my stratosphere, I kind of live out a bit more intensely the, the themes of that topic for <laughs> I don't even know how long. So considering that this popped into my mind probably at least a few weeks ago, wow, you know, identity. I guess it all spawned from the fact that through this pandemic, not that that's what this episode's particularly about, but through this pandemic, you know, a lot of us have had to really reevaluate our identity. Some of us have had no choice but to change, change our profession or change the way that we operate. You know, you don't want to be that person saying, oh, I'm so extroverted and then be all locked up and nowhere to go to be all out there. Probably in truth, I've found um, 
lockdowns and stuff like that, quite easy to manage because if I am a self-confessed introvert, then that is fine. But what is it about our identity that empowers us or disempowers us? Because it's so easy to say things like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm introverted. I mean, even to say you're an empath, you know, to say that you're sensitive. I'm sure if, if that's how you identify, you have looked at that in, in many different ways over your lifetime. I once actually was listening to a lady that said, oh, you know, I don't like the term empath because I think oh, I could be just making this like my mind remembering it this way, but it's like, I don't want that to be like an excuse was what they were trying to say. Um, you know, so being an empath, mm, I don't really believe in that or something. I, I always find it so bizarre when people are like, I don't believe in this. You know, I, ha- I had a beautiful client the other day talking about how, you know, people didn't believe in mental health being a problem, you know, and I think, how can you just not believe in that? <laughs> it's just not something you get to believe in or not. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but okay. People don't subscribe to things and that's fine. But when it comes to being an empath and being sensitive, is this something that you have hidden behind? Is it something that has brought lots of shame? Or is it an identity that you actually do embrace and that you understand within yourself? Because understanding is one thing, but embracing your quirks is another thing to make it work for you. And I guess my biggest message that I want to bring to the table is if you do feel shameful, why? Why? Because you're not the same as other people? Because you don't have the ability to take the bull by the horns? Or, you know, you find yourself uh, more emotional or more incapable of dealing with certain situations where others would flourish? I mean, no need for that. No need for that, my friend. Not, Not even in the slightest. I was listening to something about human design the other day. I'm in a group um, with the beautiful Kirsten Albon. She runs this group, Finding Your Purpose. I think that's what it is. Oh my goodness. I hope I got that right. Um, Definitely look up Kirsten Albon. She's amazing with human design. And human design, I'm, I'm no expert. I know that it is based on when you were born and whereabouts you were born. And it actually gives you a full description of all different types of things, you know, based on when and where you were born, you were born with a certain, what I'll say category, I'm not even going to go into it, category, certain numbers and actually certain parts of you that are open and closed and oh, I don't even know. So don't, don't listen to me, go off and listen to Kirsten Albon <laughs> or many, many other um, fabulous human design peeps. I'm sure you can Google it. Um, And yeah, in this particular group and in this particular life she was doing, she was just describing um, how the different human designs operate. And I think that's why I've really gravitated to learning a bit more about my own human design, as well as knowing that I'm sensitive, I'm an empath, that's fine. Because I believe that understanding your particular identity, your particular flavor, gives you the confidence to actually drop the shame. And it actually gives you the confidence to go, why am I being shamed for being that way? When those are actually my needs. You know, if a child comes up and needs a cuddle to decompress and to feel better when they've hurt themselves or whatever, you know, I guess my question is like, who are, who am I? Who are we to go? Oh, no, you don't need that. You know, why would you think you need that? The child needs what it needs. You need what you need. So there actually isn't any reason to feel shameful or wrong or 
not able to express yourself, you know, provided it's not causing any harm to anyone else, which I'm sure it's not, really stepping into what your superpowers are, understanding yourself is really, to, in my opinion, is really important. And, and coming back to Kirsten Albon in this particular um, live that I was watching of hers, she said this quote, which was, what feels good for us doesn't feel good for them. I wrote that down just to directly quote her. And that's so true. Nobody expects anyone, well, no one should expect anyone to mirror or mimic their ways. Because what is good for you doesn't feel good for others. It just doesn't. (laughs) And vice versa. And when we can finally live in a world where that is just common knowledge and understood, my goodness, it is, oh, what a life that would be. It would give you permission to live on your terms. I mean, can you imagine that? To actually be able to go, you know what, that doesn't work for me. And someone actually goes, I totally get that. I totally understand that. It would also really help us to understand, especially when things feel a bit heavy and when there's conflict, you know, knowing that most of the time someone's behaviors, it's it's not actually about us, you know, me, but it's about them, you know. That would be such a world where we're confident to be who we are and also have that level of understanding that others are different. So yeah, what feels good for us doesn't feel good for them. I absolutely love that quote from Kirsten Albon. So being an empath and having that identity of feeling like, you know, I should be able to deal with things better or I should be able to do this or that. Another trait that I see within the identity of empaths, which I want to clear up as well, can be the people pleaser vibe. Now, people ple- recovering people pleaser here, big type. <laughs> and, you know, when I was younger, I thought – that if I, I lived by that uh, mantra, you know, treat people how you want to be treated, then they would treat you good. They would mirror back that same behavior. And that would be a way to completely bypass any bad feelings, any conflicts, anything like that. Of course, as you can imagine, that did not work. (laughs) And you probably feel that within yourself as well. People want something, you can't say no, you always want to just do the right thing. That might be a mantra. Or, you know, just, just help others, you know, maybe one day they'll help you back or whoever. I mean, I know I've never expected that off other people, but you know that, you know, if you treat them well, they'll treat you good now and forever. That doesn't really work. And the more I thought about this, it sort of hit me that probably the biggest reason that I have, and I'm still guilty of it, I'll still go, oh, yeah, okay, okay, when my whole body is going, no, 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 no. (laughs) I realize now that as an empath, picking up on other people's emotions and their feelings, that has a lot to do with it. It has a lot to do with even as a child being someone that needed to protect what was coming in. So it is so much easier to try and make someone feel good rather than experience without knowing, without knowing that you're experiencing this, feel them feeling disappointed them feeling angry, you know, them feeling frustrated with you. You know, it's so much easier to say yes because us as empaths, you know, we feel the feels before even words get spoken. 
You feel the feels even without seeing body language. I mean, it could be a conversation on the phone or whatever. So, of course, it's more than just people pleasing. It's more than just treating people how you want to be treated or whatever. It's actually a big form of empathic protection to just say yes, just keep people happy. You know, I know that I get so nervous when I'm in, you know, you're in the shop and you start seeing someone, you know, mouthing off to a poor old attendant or something terrible, you know, no one has the right to do that. When you see someone getting a bit like uh, frustrated or you see someone getting nervous or anything, like if I'm out in the public, I don't even know them. I'm sort of standing from afar going, oh oh God, I can feel that through my whole body. I was once in the supermarket and um, yeah, I think it was just when all the social distancing was introduced and yeah, like I could just feel like this oh, feeling, you know, we were, it obviously felt like we we're in a much, much longer line in the, in the supermarket line because there was um, you know, so much social distancing. And I sort of turned around and I could see the person behind me really cheesed off that, you know, the line was that long and they had to wait and Oh, I actually felt it like someone had sort of punched me right in the chest, like a bit like um that scene in uh, oh I think it's I think it's the Avengers Endgame where um the 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 oh, what's her name she's like that real um she's in Doctor Strange she's that that sort of spiritual lady she sort of knocks Bruce Banner right out of his body. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, you would be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But that's what it felt like, you know. And so you can imagine that if someone is giving that type of vibe and has got the ability to like knock you right out of your body or make you feel depleted, um, you know, totally just rotten without knowing why, it's no wonder we as empaths just want to make someone feel good. So it's like the the logical answer is to almost martyr yourself for the sake of avoiding that thing that you don't even quite understand is the reason why you do it. So with that knowledge, how can you protect yourself more when these occurrences come up and you feel like you have to be the one to make others feel good just for your own safety. And I know that sounds like, oh my gosh, safety, like what is it, life or death? Of course not. But you'd be surprised if you really went back to that inner child and asked them, you know, is this sort of a bit of a survival technique? I'm almost 99.9% sure that the answer would be yes. So, do you feel comfortable with your identity? Do you make excuses? Do you wish that you were this or that when you know deep into your core that's, that's just not me? Are you living in alignment with what your heart tells you? Honestly, go back and listen to episode two of this podcast, What is Alignment? (laughs) Talk a lot about, you know, aligning to the values and all the things. You know, what is it that you need to do to make yourself feel better about being the person that you are? Because I would say that energetic protection as an empath, is actually something that will not only help you out, but it's it's almost like as necessary as brushing your teeth, as combing your hair, (laughs) as wearing clean clothes, you know, all of those types of things. I learned a little bit the hard way, not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago, having a healing session myself. Um, with the beautiful Tracy Lee from Dragonfly Angels. Please go and check her out. That, yeah, as, as an empath, just being who I am, 
She said, whoa, I am cleaning out so much energy from your field that is just trapped in little pockets that is not yours. (laughs) And I was like, oh God, I bet. Because I love, I do, I love to take on whatever I can from others and make people feel good. It never goes away. But she said, girl, you have got to protect yourself a hell of a lot more. A hell of a lot more. Like physically call in protection as often as you can remember. She even put me on a regime of hourly, you know, putting a blend of essential oils on specific for protection. I think I had lime, frankincense. Oh, gosh. What else was in there? Rose. And I can't remember the other one. She said, oh, you know, all the florals, a bit of Frankie, get some lime, get some lime in there. Um, You know, so an hourly dose of this and actually envisioning tourmaline towers around myself, calling in my guides, my gatekeeper, you know, Archangel Michael, whatever it is, whatever's your flavor. And actually just energetically cutting cords, calling back energy, just get in the habit of doing that. It doesn't have to go on forever, but just really needed in this time where we've got to patch up all of these holes. I felt like my aura was probably like Swiss cheese, you know, <laughs> really needed a bit of help. But if that's happening to me, oh my goodness, I know that happens to you guys as my audience, I'm sure that protecting yourself is a very simple means to not feeling certain things that will then enable you to do you a lot more, you know, (laughs) rather than going off and feeling shameful and feeling like, you know, you just wish you sort of could progress faster or, you know, have your shit together or whatever it is. Protecting your energy is is a big, big part of what everyone should do, but empaths in particular, because we really, really do take a lot on board and a lot which is probably not ours. Hopefully one day I could get the beautiful Tracy Lee on to talk more about protection because she is oh, a wonderful Wonderful witchy lady, very experienced, 30 years doing her thing. And also, you know, I think part of our arsenal as a an empath is, in fact, to, as I just suggested, you know, have our energy cleared by ourselves, but also have those sessions, you know, with your healers that are going to help you to just clear out that stuff that you don't even know is there. And maybe, just maybe, it's some of those trapped emotions or those trapped energies that are stored there that are, you know, once they're gone, you'll have more energy. You'll actually probably be able to cope better in, you know, the social situations and, you know, the things where your body probably gets a little bit frazzled, your energetic body as well as your physical, you know, it, it really gives you the service, like a car service, <laughs> gives you the service that you need to be able to do life. Because I'm mindful that for a lot of us, particularly where I am in Melbourne, in Australia, you know, we are supposedly, I know I don't sound very confident, but we are supposedly coming out of our lockdown, our sixth lockdown this week when I'm recording. We might already be at it by the time this podcast drops. And so for a lot of us, you know, ease yourself back in. Don't feel like you have to go hell for leather, you know, straight out of the gates and just get back into normal life. I know that as silly as this sounds, you know, I caught up with some friends, uh, you know, at a park. This was last weekend or the weekend before. And um, yeah, we had a day out at the park. And then that night I I spent the whole night with anxiety, you know, like, oh, gosh. And that's where the shame comes in, right? It's like, oh, my gosh, Megan, can't you even just like do life? But you've got to know yourself. You've got to know what works for you and what doesn't. 
What's worth embracing? And what is worth working on? So you can either heal it for good and let it go, or, you know, just keep a little a little something going, some rituals, you know, some cleansing, your regular weekly bath, or, you know, your energy clearing meditations in the morning or before bed. What is it? What can you do personally to make yourself feel good? Because I know that when you feel good, you know, everything else seems to be much more protected all around you. So reflections from this episode, my loves, is really, you know, what parts of your identity serve you? What parts of your identity do not? If it's a story that you tell yourself that actually doesn't help you, then what can you do to release that? And if there's parts of you that you don't want to compromise on anymore, then equally, what can you do to bring more of that in and, you know, unapologetically stand there, two feet on the ground, heels in the ground, in the dirt, saying, no, this is me. This is my normal. Your normal is you and I honor that. My normal is me and I honor that. What feels good for us doesn't feel good for them. As I said, (laughs) and just, it's all about embracing, embracing the wonderful magical you. As I always say, when you know, love and accept yourself, you do embrace the magic that is you. And if you need more help with this, do know that you can always check out my page, meganjean.com. Go and follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm at Ms. Megan Jean in these places. And let's get some support happening and energy clearing if that's necessary too. Until next time, I shall talk to you then. I'm Megan Jean, and from the bottom of my heart, I truly thank you for joining me on the Empath, Intuitive, Heart Driven Podcast. You can find me at www.meganjean.com, and I'm known as at Ms. Megan Jean on all social media. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, review, share. It's going to help other people just like you find this beautiful, healing, energetic container. I look forward to speaking with you next time. Until then, embrace the magic that is you.